Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Bibliophiles, a show from the Ann Arbor District Library in Michigan that's all about books. Each episode, we spend a few minutes talking about a book-related theme. This time, we're talking about books that are fiction that have something to do with food, so not a cookbook. And my name is Christopher. I'm joined, as always, by Amanda and Lucy, and we have a special guest star this time, Laura. So uh, let's kick things off with Amanda, what book did you bring for us this time? All right. So the book I chose is not an unknown book. It, I chose to talk about Saturday Night at the Lakeside Supper Club by J. Ryan Stradall. Uh, this book came out in 2023, and that's when I read it. I read it in the summer. It's a great summer read. Um, this was his third novel set in the Midwest involving some sort of food thing. Um, Kitchens of the Great Midwest was his first. Very well known. I read it, enjoyed it. And then The Logger Queen of Minnesota. I didn't finish that one for some reason, but I read this one a third. I read them all within the same like month. And this is my favorite of the three. I love this one. I don't know why I like this one the best, but I did. Um, it's not a trilogy. You don't have to read them all. Um, but this one, it takes place over many decades. It involves one family and it focuses on this place called the Lakeside Supper Club. And the current owner is a woman named Mariel and Mariel inherited the restaurant from her grandmother. Betty, not her mother. Her mother didn't inherit it. The granddaughter did. So the fact that Mariel inherited the restaurant instead of her mother, Florence, that causes a rift between her and her mother that kind of spans over time. And so Mariel is running the restaurant now. And Mariel is married to a man named Ned. And Ned also happens to be the heir of a successful chain of diners that directly compete. They're the new up and coming thing. They compete with the Lakeside Separate Club. So you've got a lot of characters, a lot of things happening, but it, it all has this like Midwest charm where things are just very descriptive and not slow, but just like calm. And you get to know these, these family members so well. And, but it focuses on these three women, these three female characters, the mother, the granddaughter and the grandmother. And you get to see them at different points in their lives and you kind of can see how their relationships were formed and what problems were caused and what kind of um, spurred them on to become who they are in like present day. Um, but you've got this like old version of this supper club, which is competing with these new hot diners with these new hot menu items where things change more often than a, a, an old school family style supper club. So one of the themes in the book is this um the idea of family legacy and when is it okay to let that this family legacy this family business like continue forever is it okay to like let it go so you can do something else with your life so i really like that aspect of it and the book is set in minnesota i think it's northern minnesota and so there's a lot of like midwesternism in the book that i just really latched onto and really enjoyed and I don't know how this author does it, but he writes a really good, strong female character. Like all of his books, have, that's who he writes, who the, the people are that are in them. And he does it really well, which is interesting. I just wanted to know how he does that. Um, but I really enjoyed the characters here. I loved learning about these three women in their lives and how they are all different and all strong and how they came to their relationships with this um, supper club over time. There's a family tragedy that happens in the book that, the, that some of the family members have to work around and that causes more problems in their relationships. Um, but it's just, it's a really enjoyable book. It's a fantastic summer read. Um, you don't have, to, if you haven't, if you have not read any of J. Ryan Stradall's books, I recommend picking up one of them. Chances are you're gonna love it. I really, really was drawn to this one for some reason. Um, but yeah, if you want to read a really good like Midwestern book in the summer coming up, I highly recommend um, one of his books, especially uh, Saturday Night at the Lakeside Supper Club. So that is that. Uh, Laura, what did you bring to share? Oh, well, I read Love and Saffron by Kim Fay. And this was a really great little short read. It's actually an epistolary novel. So it's written all in letter format between two women during the 1960s. Um, so it takes place all during the 1960s for about a year or so as they correspond um, to each other. So the first woman is um, Joan Bergstrom and she's 27 years old living in Los Angeles. 
a uh, recent graduate from Stanford and she's an aspiring food writer. She has a really like big interest in food and uh, travel as well. So she's taken some travels and um, discovered food from other cultures and is really inspired to learn more. And she starts off by writing a letter to this columnist that she enjoys, um, Imogen Fortier, and she's a writer for a column in the Northwest Home and Life magazine. And her column's called Letter from the Island because she lives with her husband on Camino Island, Washington. So Joan writes her like a little fan letter that she enjoys her column, and she includes a little packet of saffron that she acquired on a recent travel that she had taken. And this and this sparks like a love for food in Imogen because she's never tried that before, tried that spice in her cooking. And um, she and her husband make a dish with it, with the saffron, and they end up really loving that. And it actually sparks memories that her husband had from serving in the Great War that he had kind of forgotten um, because he had had something with saffron before and it kind of like sparked the memories again for him. And so Imogen's so thankful to Joan and they continue their correspondence uh, back and forth and they're sharing recipes. And um, Joan is really inspiring Imogen who is older in her like later 60s and 70s to kind of um, branch out in her cooking and discover new foods and new things. And um, Joan is younger in her in her 20s but she and Imogen really like get a good friendship together and it's really a fun read it was very enjoyable to read and see like their friendship grow and there are some ups and downs throughout the novel that they both have that occur to them but they are able to like find their their love for for reading and um, for cooking and they write each other their letters and it kind of brings them strength through some hard times that they come across throughout the novel. Um, I also really enjoyed the recipes. I There's a quite a few in here that I never heard of before. So, and there's like a whole recipe section in the back. So it's not like a cookbook, but there are recipes in the book. So that was really fun to read and it was a great way to break up the novel. Um, I also have never re like read, read a book that was all in letter format. So that was really cool to see. And it made the book just felt like it was a conversation between like two friends that you were just watching unfold. And I also really enjoyed the historical parts uh, that took place during the 60s and just seeing how um, it was two women. So it was their point of view and kind of what they were dealing with during that time and um, you know, kind of the experiences that they were having and trying to, uh, Joan, especially as a young woman, was trying to grow her career and see where where she fit in the world during that time and aspiring to be a food writer in Los Angeles. So it was really cool to see how two women of different ages could still get a friendship. And it was all basically over food and um, their love for travel as well. So it was like a really fun read, um, very quick read. You could read it in one sitting. Um, the author does describe it as a book that she wanted it to be read and savored in one nourishing sitting. That's what she like mm -hmm. wrote it described as. So I would definitely recommend it as just a fun like summer read and a really great read for um, the friendship aspect of it. Um, so um, well, who do we have? Um, Lucy, do you want to go next? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, that sounds really good. I love epistolary novels, like novels yeah. and letters or emails or any of that. So um, that sounds really great. Um, the book that I chose to read is a new novel. It came out at the end of 2023. It's called Piglet, and it's by Lottie Hazel. Piglet is the story of a woman who lives in uh, London named Piglet. Well, this is a nickname, but she's called Piglet throughout the book. And the book takes place in the couple weeks before her wedding. She lives with her fiance, Kit. And um, it's following that time up until these few days before her wedding when Kit confesses this terrible truth to her. 
uh, and it's the type of thing that would make her decide whether or not she's going to get married to him still. We never find out what that truth is, which is a really interesting part of the book. Um, but this truth also sort of threatens to unravel the life that Piglet has really carefully built for the two of them. She is a food writer and she works um, in a, she works for a publisher that puts together cookbooks and she does a lot of cooking and there is food on every page of this book, the things she's cooking. And part of where the food comes into place is sort of class because Kit is really upper class and Piglet grew up in the middle class. So she's trying to distance herself from her family. And there is a, difference in the type of foods that they eat. So she's really like trying to cook this elevated fancy food and these tablescapes are lushly described and almost to the point of like, not rot, but you know, you can picture all this food just being like so abundant that like, what's, what's the next step for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's kind of the life that she's built this perfect life where they both have jobs they love and they entertain and she's a great cook and she is a great cook uh, and it follows her on this countdown to her wedding and she is unraveling. She is trying to grapple with this and still sort of going ahead with this wedding and, and not really dealing with reality. And much of the grappling that she does is shown through the lens of food, either by like what she's making or she's going to restaurants and pretending to be a food critic. So she orders like tons of food. Um, And it's, really important food in this book is really important for how she perceives herself as a person but like as far as class I said and family but other also how other people perceive her or how people perceive women through food like what they eat what they choose to eat what they don't eat um either like that class piece what what food she's serving or also you know if you walk into a restaurant and someone has all these plates in front of them and it's a woman like so then there's this um part of her being called piglet and we do kind of find out this backstory behind that name and it's a family nickname so that might be endearing but it's a little bit of a um not so endearing story and to be a woman called piglet by everybody really everybody except like people at work um is kind of a weird label to have and so then you see how food relates to her body there's a scene there are some scenes in this book it gets like claustrophobic and a little cringy but in a great way it's like you're just in it like the scene where she's trying on a wedding dress and like being kind of sh- it's just it's horrible and amazing writing um and it just has, as I said before, food on every page, elaborate, expansive meals. And the author, Lottie Hazel, um, cooked along. She called it method writing. And so she cooked along mm-hmm. with uh, Piglet the whole time, including making a bouche, which is what Piglet decides to make for her wedding. So Piglet decides to make her own wedding cake, which is one kind of a lot. And then a croquembouche, which is this French dessert, which is um, like shoe paste like puff um like kind of like a puff pastry like an eclair ball tons of those stacked up and they're stuck together with like melted sugar and the idea when you eat this it's a french wedding cake is you have to destroy it so not only is she making this really ornate complicated thing for her wedding which is happening to a man who has confessed some terrible truth to her but she's making something that's going to be destroyed so that's a sort of like so um it just is a great metaphor for just generally like her entire life at that point. And um, the book just says so much about like gender expectations for women and weddings and women's bodies. And, um, you know, as I said before, what they're eating and it just has all these sort of like really interesting social and cultural touch points all of which is portrayed through the lens of food and the food is amazing to read about it's just i mean she's never gonna cook something simple or something that would be have been served on her family table for dinner growing up because she would deem that too you know lower class so she's just shopping for like these expensive cheeses and um wines and sets the table in this elaborate way and so it's really just it's such a good book it's so absorbing there are parts of it that are definitely like, you know, 
cringe worthy, but in a good way, it's just like using this food as a tool to tell the story of this woman, but also the story of women and culture and society in general. It's just brilliant. This is Lottie Hazel's first novel. She wrote it like based on a thesis she was writing, um, but she isn't before this, she's a game designer. And so it's interesting to think about like, how do you create a story through words, like in the same way you're creating a game, you know, trying to tell a story or how people go through the story. So anyway, um, that is Piglet by Lottie Hazel. And it is definitely fiction about food. There's food on every page. I highly recommend it. Christopher, what did you bring? Well, I went back to an old favorite author and it was such a great excuse to revisit someone that I hadn't read in so long that I used to just adore. So I read After the Banquet by Yukio Mishima. This novel came out in 1960. It was translated by Donald Keene. And it, it tells the story of a restaurant owner who falls in love with a politician. And it follows the arc of this political campaign. So the book really focuses on four major banquets that happen throughout the story. The book opens with a banquet, and that's where the owner of the restaurant meets this politician, and they eventually fall in love. And then there's a subsequent banquet where their wedding announcement is made. And towards the end of the book, there are the final two chapters are called Before the Banquet, and after the banquet, also referring to two separate banquets. It's really a, the fascinating story of their romance, which is very subdued. They're both older people and their eventual divorce and the decision of the restaurant owner to maintain her property throughout this whole process as well as this political campaign that's happening. But the four banquets that occur, uh, we get these descriptions of the food that's being served. We get menus that are actually printed in the book, which is such a great touch. As I said, I love Mishima. I think he has a very spare writing style, but there is so much internal uh, kind of really views into someone's internal thinking and the slights that they may have done to each other or their perceived slights and all of this, uh, all of these relationships that are happening below the surface. So at the end of the story, the owner, Kazu, the restaurant owner, Kazu, has renounced her husband She's been faced with this choice whether to keep the restaurant or keep her marriage, and she chooses the restaurant, and it closes with her getting ready to reopen the restaurant after this long period of it being neglected. So it's it's great. It's such a fast read, and it was so nice to go back to Mishima after all. Uh, I still love him, even though he's a very controversial author. Uh but that's just me. <laughs> well, any final comments about food and fiction? I'll just say that fiction featuring food is so interesting because you really get that love of language and the des describing different dishes or how they're made or where people are eating them at. You can picture them. You can visualize. You can taste the food they're cooking. And I love how hungry I get when I read books about food. I think it's so interesting as humans reading books about food because it's something that uh, people can relate to. So really cool. And you like our different books that we brought. We had a couple of restaurants. Or, so right. neat. Fun so topic. I have to ask, isn't this the second time we've done the, a food topic? Because I remember the last time I read a book about food was for Bibliophiles. And I remember the book I read. Was it fiction or do we do nonfiction or do oh, we do we did nonfiction about food? That's what okay. the difference was, right? We did because you did that one. Lucy, you did that one book. Wasn't it about cannibalism? Anyways, 
Yeah, maybe I did crying in H Mart. I don't remember. Yeah, right. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. We can go back and look at our notes. But yes, there's. I mean, there's a lot out there. And if you think about it, like, food is central to so many different facets of life. And I mean, all we have to eat it. But like, meals and what people are making. And um, I'm kind of surprised when you read a book about food. You're like, wait shouldn't all books have food in them right. because yeah everybody eats right so yeah we also yeah. Like, like yeah and you get a sense of like um, different cultures and communities when you're reading the different kinds mm -hmm. of books for different people mm -hmm. yeah yeah I'm really cool now i'm hungry <laughs> i yeah. know me too it's lunchtime i know wow. perfect uh that was our episode on food and fiction we hope you enjoyed it if you would like to let us know what books you're reading, whether it's about food or not, you can leave a note in the comments section below. I'd like to sp I'd like to thank our special guest Laura one more time, and uh, until we see you next time, happy reading. <laughs>